I'm going to do the thing. Hey. Um, first, I'll introduce us. This is Chris Aquino. Hello. Chris, can you talk about yourself. Uh, I'm the director of web company called and Chris has a huge team of front end and back end engineers. And um, I'm Brandy Porter. I'm the VP of Engineering at Big Nerd Ranch. Um, fun story: I started as the director of design at Big Nerd Ranch, and now I'm VP of Engineering. Would love to geek out about that uh, with you afterwards if you're interested. Um, at Big Nerd Ranch, we teach people how to program. You might know us for that. We write books on programming, and we also uh, build apps for people that don't program. Um, so we have all of these services that kind of complement each other. The more we learn how to teach, the better we are at delivering apps for customers. So um, come talk, chat with us about that. We have some literature on our classes, uh, if you want to look them up, and also on our consulting services. There's a front-end development boot camp that is coming up in February at Callaway Gardens, which is south of Atlanta here in town. And so check out BigNerdRanch.com for more details on that. And uh, it's basically a week where you fill your brain to bursting with HTML5, JavaScript, a little Ember in there? Uh, some Ember, some Find CSS, it? a lot of JavaScript, lots of debugging. Oh, and if, uh, the food uh, will also <laughs> fill your belly. Lots it's of a, butter. If you like it's butter. a good time. It's a good chance to level up your skills. Why craft events? What is happening here? Um, well, if you can't tell, we love to build things. We're nerds, capital N, we totally own that word. Uh, but that also means that we love to really get in the weeds with stuff. And so that means that when Raspberry Pis are introduced, we get all in. Other microprocessors, things like that. We had an LED light hack night, we had a, a drone hack night recently. Um, but also, we love to hand make things. We have a craft night once a month, and we get people coming in with knitting, with sewing. Uh, they'll bring their uh, programming project in, and they'll work on that. Um, we'll do some felty tutorials, whatever. Um, it's just a great way to kind of do some analog engineering. And I mean cats. So there's really no explanation there. Cats are extremely irresponsible with the internet. Um, you really can't leave them alone with it. And so we really wanted to create something that broadcast and the internet together in a responsible way. And so we'll be going through some activities with you. Let's play hot mouse. Okay, what we need for this is six volunteers that want to be cats. Okay, I saw a lot of cat people in here. People on the edges, you're going to get volunteered because we have some hands-on things for you to do. So here's one. All right, who else? These are handcrafted cat ears for you. These are yours to keep, to gift, whatever you need to do with them. All right, how many? Was that everybody? All right. Okay. So. All right, Brandy, would you like to demonstrate what happens here? I will. Are you ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press the buttons. We're gonna activate Hot Mouse. This is a Hot Mouse. It has electronics inside of it. It's a handcrafted vessel that cushions. A whole system of things we'll tell you about inside of it. If you move the hot mouse around, things happen. Things, things really happen. Oh, wait. <laughs> live demos, so good. So what's really fun about live demos? I'm going to talk a little more about the handcrafted mouse. So we have a whole package of innards in here. We have a Raspberry Pi happening in here. We have a uh, motion detection device, an accelerometer, and we also have a little battery pack in there. So we had to go shopping for goods that would fit inside of this mouse. And then we had to make the mouse. Um, we have lots of little di uh, diagrams to show you of how we built the vessel to be tossed around the room. And I think I'm going to show you this. Exactly. Do that. Do the thing. Left-handed mouse clicking. Okay, whiteboard planning happened. Um, we knew that we sort of committed to this talk about the Internet of Things, handcrafted goods, and cats. And when it got accepted, we had to figure out what to do here. And we thought, you know, we want to do some kind of a teleaffect thing. We want cats to talk to each other, maybe. We want humans and cats to interact with each other. We want to create this Internet connection among cats and humans. Um, we also thought briefly about Taylor Swift. 
that got eliminated. Um, and so we have a couple of industrial designers on our UX team. It's this incredible combination of skills that works really well for user experiences. Um, so we, we sketched diagrams. I had a whole other diagram for how this mouse was going to be built. It was going to have like a side panel that opened up and like things fit inside of it and it sealed up and that was ridiculous. And so Zach, one of our designers, figured out how to make a little bag. And you just untie the bag and you put the electronics inside. They're all taped up. It would not safely make it through the airport. Uh, it's very bundled. It's taped up. And once that gets put into place, then you can toss it around and the accelerometer picks up some motion. We can set the sensitivity on that. Big moment, big movement. Um, and then we can send that message to the server. Um, so we have a couple of activities. We have one where our cats in the audience are going to participate and be the cats. And then the other is where we have a couple of communications happening. So the the human-sized cat toy sends a message to our representative cat pillows, which we'll show you in a second. Ah, it's working. OK. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> toss, it, toss it to a cat. Can you notice? OK. Things are happening. You want to play my little cute screen with my animation again? Oh, yes. Because I spent a lot of time on that keynote animation. <laughs> All right, first cat here, so hot mouse. Hot potato, you toss the potato around. You don't want to get stuck with it. Hot mouse, if the music stops on your turn. <laughs> oh, see if it goes out. All right, the other cats, stand up. Stand up, that would be a little bit, maybe nobody will get hit in the face with a mouse. We also missed a mouse over here. I mean, a cat. All right, go again. So I'm out. You're out. Sorry, man. Oh, let's see. That's going to be you. That's going to be you. You got to sit down. <laughs> that impressively stayed on. <laughs> okay, you got to sit down now. <laughs> All right, we're going for we're going for the two remaining. <laughs> oh, that's you! All right, we have our two remaining. Congratulations! Yay! Philip. All right, thank you. You can hold on to that mouse for one second, and uh, the rest of the. This Computer man over here is getting my keynote back up. Um, the other, uh, the other activity is called Cat Nanny. So Hot Mouse, the idea is that your cats are playing with this toy and it's entertaining them based on their response. There are some cat toys that do that right now, but there aren't many cat toys that tell you the human that your loved one, your fur kid, is playing with that toy you bought them. And so that's what we created with Cat Nanny. If you'll go find a couple of cats to give that to, I'll give you one. And then if you will come to the edge of the thing and then you guys, are we ready to switch over? We are. So what you'll do is toss that around. We can actually get maybe two more people to stand up. How about you? You want to stand up? You. <laughs> And then some over here. You want to stand up? So come to the edge of the aisle so that you can kind of catch the mouse. Are we ready? Uh, we are almost ready. Almost ready. OK, so the idea here is that you're communicating um, with your cat, and your cat's communicating with you. So as the cat plays with the toy, you get a response. And the response should be emotional, right? Like you should, um, it shouldn't just be a light that turns on that says, my cat's playing with a thing. It should really make you feel the warm and fuzzy that your cat makes you feel. Pun intended. So the, oh, you go. You so the cat nanny, it looks like your cat. This is a calico, by the way. Thank you very much. And um, so we have two cats, and they're both paired with the mouse. So Chris just switched over the signals. So now we're getting a, a pass signal going through a stop here. All right, so let's start tossing that around. And then keep the cats. Are things happening? What's happening? What does that mean? <laughs> 
It's purring. Your cat pillow is purring for you. Pass the pillows around and let people kind of feel the cat pillow. So we had a speaker in there to play a purring sound. And we realized that vibration is really strong. And so it actually takes well care of the purring effect. Um, so in future hacks, we would love for the human side of this conversation to be able to respond and somehow change the gameplay for the cat so that the cat can tell that someone's playing with them even if you're not able to be with them at the time. <laughs> so let some, of the, let some of the cats that are tossing things around be the quote-unquote human <laughs> for a little while and let them feel some of the vibrations from the cat pillow. So we hand, we hand crafted all of these crazy things and we created an installation and some padding. That's totally cool because we made it to do that. Um, <laughs> and if you get hit in the face, you're not going to get hurt. Although the cats are kind of heavy. Um, so the cats have inside of them another Raspberry Pi, a larger battery pack. We actually had to include a pretty big battery pack for the vibration device. Um, and so that vibration device is in there as well. Am I missing anything? Uh, that's it. That's it. Oh, and then the, the wireless connectivity Psh, in both I, of those. Whatever. You know, the internet part of the whole thing. Um, so anyway, does everybody, does everybody need to, like, experience one of these handcrafted experiences? Has everybody touched the vibrating cat? <laughs> <laughs> Has everybody touched the vibrating cat? Okay, good. Awesome. <laughs> You've achieved your conference accomplishment. <laughs> you can totally leave them in the audience, and you guys can play with them. I definitely need them back or else there are totally some people that will give me side eye for the rest of the year if they don't get to play with those in the office. Um, <laughs> twist my arm. Um, so the cats have a little Velcro pouch right underneath. We skipped the little X on the tail. Um, but we also needed to make sure that these were safe to play with, and so they have some heat-resistant material lining all of the electronics, along with all of the padding that's taped up in there. And the mice have that little foam padding that you can feel going around it as well. There's an open mouse right here that we can start passing around to. That's just going to keep doing that as long as people are messing with it. So that's what the inside of the mouse looks like. So. Chris and I weren't the only ones that brought this effort together. As I mentioned, nerds like to make things. Um, and so this Philip, he's helping his hand stuff out over here. And uh, Jeff and Zach, they're from our design team. And that's Zach engineering things. I had written all the plans out, and he threw them on the ground and said, I'm going to redo this. And um, <laughs> so uh, we had piles of fabric and Velcro and thread and buttons. And we had to find fur fabric, which when you cut it, becomes 47,000 pieces of fuzz. And, um, and even Chris's wife, Angela, pitched in, made these little cat ears for us. She's sewing one of the mice right there. And, um, and so we had a blast making it. I was telling Chris, like, even though this was for a talk, I just needed to make something fun that was hacked and just interesting and cool. And then we have the end product. You have to use that keynote sparkle effect for something. <laughs> David House is one of our iOS engineers, but he's multi-talented. And he did a huge thing bringing all of these efforts together. He helped us a ton with the Raspberry Pi programming, with that Python stuff that's on there that Chris is going to talk about in just a little bit. Here you can see some of the components. This is a charger, a battery pack, I mean. Um, you have the vibration device here. And we have some spare components up here that you can look at afterwards. And then, of course, the Pi and things like that. There's another battery pack. All right. It's all you. Building Hot Mouse. So the first activity was Hot Mouse, which I know you all enjoyed. <laughs> uh, this is the rough architecture of Hot Mouse. So for each Pi, uh, each mouse okay. rather, you've got an accelerometer in there. Interestingly, it's an analog accelerometer. It has to be piped through an analog to digital converter. Uh, dealing with all that requires a little bit of Python just to read the inputs. Um, and then that's just sending a post request to the Node.js server running off of the presentation machine as we speak, which is why I had to switch away from the slides. <laughs> then, uh, actually on the same computer, I should have drawn a box around this, in order for the music to play and pause, I used a classic piece of Unix software called mPlayer. 
What's interesting about M player is it's not just an audio player. It's an audio player that can take uh, commands from the keyboard. Well, that's not going to do any good because then you'd be like, Chris, catch up. We're, we're, we're playing hot mouse here. You're not toggling the thing fast enough. M player can take uh, input from a file. Uh, not like just a text file. There's actually a, a Unix file version of like a node stream. Or one could say that a node stream is basically um, uh, a Unix FIFO um, file. Uh, it's, it's basically a named pipe that resides on the file system. Fun stuff. I will show you how that works. The Python is, it's just math. We're just doing, we're just figuring out if you're moving enough with the, with the mouse. If you're doing real timid motions, no, no action. Um, throwing it around works really well. Or if you were here earlier, you could have seen Brandy demonstrating the dance moves required it's to keep the music. It's pretty good with this situation right yeah, here. Yeah, that, that. The, uh, the meow mix. The uh, node server itself is uh, using some hot yes. six syntax. What? Yeah. Uh, and I got lazy. I just threw express in here. The post request to particular endpoints for moving and for stopping. So the accelerometer. Uh, is driving Python, or rather Python's reading it, and Python says, ah, there was not enough motion. I'm going to send uh, a post request to the stop endpoint. Or if it detects motion, it will say, we're, we're moving, it's good. I'm going to send a post request to the node server at the start, uh, the start moving uh, endpoint. Uh, and just a few lines to get that. Listen to the port. Now, I talked about the music player being something driven off of the, uh, from the terminal. And in order to make that happen, this is just a short sh uh, shell script that creates the, um, the file, the special file, the named uh, pipe, as it were. And I am just telling uh, mPlayer to start off paused. And I would like you to be the slave uh, to this input file here. And please play this Meow Mix song. Thank you very much. It's a 10-hour song. <laughs> I will give you a copy afterwards if you'd like. <laughs> now, uh, in order to get this to run, you just run it from the command line. It gives you all this fancy output. If you do this at a coffee shop, people think you're hacking their bank account. It's awesome. Um, and uh, you know, it'll tell you the, what's going on with the song. Notice that it's this tiny amount of 10 hours. <clears throat> so to, in order for Node to tell the pipe that something is happening, uh, I had to use the, uh, the file system module to just create a writable stream. I'm opening up. To that to name file in the, in the temp directory, and I'm just writing the word pause, I'm literally writing a string. And this drove me batty for about an hour because it wasn't working. I could echo to that file, and it would make the song play and pause. Great. Why couldn't my Node code do it? Uh, this little bit here, um, OS. I need it to append the end of line character for my operating system. Super annoying. So, pro tip. That. That's what you want if you're working with, uh, with uh, FIPOs. All right. Now, that is uh, very much, you know, that's, that's cool. We're, we're basically getting the mouse to talk to the server. Yeah, yeah, we're playing music. Great. Uh, let's have it talk to another device. And that's what Cat Nanny is. And the idea is, what was it? What was the word we came up with? Teleaffect. Yes. The, the emotion of your cat being broadcast over the intertubes. As if though the internet isn't already taking over the cat emotion. Um, but you can find out if your cat happens to be playing with a toy. And then, you know, warm fuzzies. So um, for as many cats as you, you care to have, uh, perhaps you and your cat's other owner uh, or best friend or whatever. Uh, one of my cats, I'm pretty sure, like, goes through like a teleportation portal and shows up at a friend's house. Because he'll disappear for like eight hours. I'm like, where could he possibly be? Uh, so... Again, just using the reusing the same hardware and software setup, um, our node server now is communicating over WebSockets to distribute that information to each of the cats to say, "Hey, time start vibrating because you know there's a whole lot of shaking going on." Now, um, the server is modified ever so slightly. I'm just writing strings over the WebSocket. Not that exciting, uh, since. I didn't set up separate, you know, chat channels on the over the WebSockets. I have each cat keyed um, to a particular string, P1 and P2. So creative. Now, um, this is just a toggle. If cat one sees a P1, it'll start. 
vibrating. The next time it sees a P1, it'll stop vibrating. Super, super simple. And yeah. Um, Let's see, the WebSockets, as you may already know, WebSockets is pretty straightforward to work with with Node. If you don't, now you do. Uh, WebSockets, it's great. You just, um, you're going to import one module. Uh, that fires up a server at a particular port. Uh, I wrote uh, an extra function here just to help me broadcast. I just decided that these, this line needed to be in this function and not down at the body. Upon connecting, that is, when the server sees a connection come in, it says, well, when a, there's a message over this socket, then I'm going to broadcast that message to everybody. I'm just going to spam everybody listening over web sockets with whatever text I got. And I'm going to go back a slide uh, and just remember that I'm just sending strings. And on the client side, I'm just looking for specific strings. Things can get much, much, much more complicated. But for our purposes, this was enough. Now, uh, lessons learned, uh, AKA things that frustrated me as I was working on this project. Running Node on, uh, or rather the most recent version of Node requires a little extra work if you want to run it on your Raspberry Pi. Remember, uh, Raspberry Pis, they're not full on uh, PCs or Macs. They are basically running the, the same chipset that is going to be on a lot of your smartphones or tablets. So you're going to need to grab a different distribution of Node. Uh, these folks make an excellent distribution. It is literally just a couple of commands as you're setting up your Raspberry Pi in order to get the latest version of Node running properly on your Raspberry Pi. This was uh, this took me about four hours to find, but after I found it, it then took me 15 minutes to set up Node, which was what it was. Uh, finding your Raspberry Pi once it's connected to the network. There are different Unix commands you can use. Whatever. I use something called PiFinder, uh, P-I-F-I-N-D-E-R. And it's just going to scan your network and look through your Raspberry Pi and tell you the IP addresses. It's much, much handier than trying to pull out your hacker through and find them yourself. Uh, and finally, I've seen a lot of people edit code directly on the Raspberry Pi. Like you're going to shell in, and you're going to use dust off your your VI or VI chops, maybe Emacs if it's on there. No, 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 no. You want to use Sublime Text, Textmate, or Atom Editor, or whatever. So, uh, in order for you to mount um, the file system of your Raspberry Pi, you want to install something called SSHFS. That's a file system over SSH, and so it just uses the, the same, almost the same command you use for logging in. You use that for saying, hey, I, I want to, I created like a, my Pi cat project folder on my Mac, and I would like to magically um, just tunnel over the files on my Raspberry Pi and edit here as if they were local to my Mac. Uh, this was very messy, very, very messy. Because, um, <clears throat> again, editing on the Pi is pretty painful. Um, those were my big three takeaways, and now uh, I've got a pretty good setup, a pretty good workflow for uh, building all kinds of ridiculous devices, and since they know crafty people who can help me make them beautiful and not look like the TSA needs to lock me away, um, I, I foresee doing a lot more of this. So that's, that's the, the technical portion of our chat. So the thing that... I learned from this too were um, that, and I kind of already knew this, but I've been very, very busy lately and kind of forgot that having fun is incredibly important. We all got into this because we enjoyed what we were doing uh, when we first got introduced to it. And so um, you can see all of the people that helped us. We did not pay them any money at all. Uh, they <laughs> so far. But um, we said, we need some help building some crazy cat stuff and uh, putting some processors in there and making them talk to each other. And people showed up and um, we've been putting this together for about two weeks now and it was um, it was incredible. So it just was a great reminder that it's important to step back, remember why you love this, and to make something fun. Um, this was in our spare time, but it didn't, you know, it didn't really feel like work because it was so much fun. Also it's not work, it's making cats. But still <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was incredibly important. So uh, just a reminder, these are our Twitter accounts, our Twitter handles if you need them. Um, and I'll plug that class one more time. Our classes are actually really incredible. 
Um, I know a lot of people say that, but this is legit. Um, but if you have any questions at all about that stuff or the devices themselves, um, we'll have, like I said, some spare electronics up here. We'll bring the devices up. I think they might be still vibrating. It's possible. Um, that might be your fault. Um, <laughs> additionally, we have some killer swag up here, y'all. Um, these are koozies, and they're shaped like cowboy boots. Um, we also have some nerd glasses. And some, like I said, literature on our, uh, our classes and our consulting. So come on up, shake our hands, tell us if you hated it or loved it. Um, can we put the music back on? Will that force you to leave early? Yes? Yes! Uh, also, These are our people. And uh, if I'm going to be disassembling one of the cats, um, showing the innards. And if anybody wants to take a closer look at the code, come see me. Come see me. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. You gonna make it stop vibrating? I'm gonna make it stop vibrating. <laughs> Can you hear it? Is that on the microphone? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this out and take the battery out. <laughs>